Janice Cameron is one of Indwell's more than 700 tenants. It is, um, it's security. Um, you feel like you can breathe and like you can actually not have to be afraid of whether you're going to have a place to live. It sounds like you're describing home. Yes. Janice came to Indwell after a series of unfortunate events that could happen to anyone. Left with a limited income and no place to live, the wait list for affordable housing were more than 10 years long. So I had been working and I have a physical disability and my condition had worsened which meant that I could no longer afford my rent, which at the time was about $900 a month. So I um, began looking and trying to apply for subsidized housing while switching from a two bedroom apartment to a bachelor apartment. Um, unfortunately, the building that I moved into had a major infestation of both cockroaches and bed bugs. And so within about 10 weeks, um, they started into my apartment and I, um, the infestation was so bad that it meant I was going to need to throw all of my belongings out. At that point, before I moved to The Bachelor, I was already looking for the lowest cost places that I could possibly um, afford. She eventually found a small apartment to share with someone else, but when that fell through, she found herself homeless living in a shelter. And the waiting list for Indwell at that time was three to five years, but the waiting list on subsidized housing was 10 to 13 years long. And so it just felt hopeless in terms of, well, okay, like I'm desperate and things aren't okay right now. And I don't have people that I can couch surf in terms of staying in their, on their couches while trying to wait for 10 years to go by. Like, what am I going to do? Janice says she fell into depression as she desperately looked for a way out. Eventually, I considered whether or not to try to break the law so that I get thrown into jail, thinking, well, okay, I don't know whether there's a different avenue if you've been in jail, but at this point, I don't know where I'm, I'm gonna be, and I was terrified to be living on the street while at the shelter, a door opened for her to live at one of Indwell's buildings in Hamilton. She has now called Indwell home for the past three years. Where do you think you'd be if you didn't get that call from Indwell that day? I don't know if I would be alive if I didn't get, get that help. Why do you say that? I was really, really depressed when, when things are really bad and you don't have some place to live. Um, you have to make choices between whether you're going to have food or whether you're going to have a roof, but you know that you don't have enough money to deal with clothing as, as well as food, as, as well as rent. And if you have special medications like I did, sometimes you have to pay for those as well. And all of that can add up and it's not something that you can juggle. Yeah. So um, it's very easy when you're looking, when, when, you, when you're in a crisis, it's very hard to be told that we can't help you until 10 years. And so depression gets really bad and things feel pretty, pretty hopeless. So yeah, I d don't really think I would be alive if it wasn't for Indwell. And there are so many other stories like Janice's across our country. Unfortunately, not all of them end in safe, affordable housing like Indwell. Some estimates are that over 283,000 households are waiting for affordable housing right now in Canada.